Welcome to the channel, everybody. As always, it's good to see you. So Stoker here, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use a compass without a map. Let's get to this. Is this thing even on? And so as we get going, if you want to master your field craft and develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. And so we'll go over a couple different scenarios on how and when this is going to be an applicable skill for you to master. I'm going to actually demonstrate and walk through how to do this, as well as on the back end, go over a couple lessons learned, right? And so just to kind of level the playing curve uh, for a second so that we're all firing on the same engines uh, in the same motor, if you will. It doesn't matter if we're using a lensatic compass or base plate compass. In this particular one, I will be using a lensatic compass. If you want to know the differences between the two, you can check out this video right up here uh, to my left, your upper right, and uh, check that card out, and it'll, it'll go into a deep dive of the similarities and the differences between the two. Go into this assuming that we all know that compasses all point to magnetic north. Now, in this particular case, I don't care about true north. I don't care about grid north. I mean, true north I kind of care about, but I don't care about grid north at all. Not, not one bit. I'm only going to be using magnetic north. And of course, I'm going to want to be mindful of things like ferro or electromagnetic uh, interferences that may be happening with the compass. Maybe it's, it's a knife or a gear that's on my person. Maybe it's some overhead power lines, things of this nature, right? Because that's all going to have an in, uh, interference or uh, cause some discrepancies in my compass. Right? And so some key words or phrases and things I'm going to be using in this video, uh, just, again, just to kind of help level the playing field. I'm going to be going over and talking about my pace count. I'm not going to demonstrate how to do a pace count here, I'm just, but I know that my pace count is 65 paces for every 100 meters. You need to know what yours is. Right, and of course, I'm going to need. I'm going to be talking about setting azimuths or bearings or directions, things of this nature. And all I'm talking about is the line of travel that I'm going to be going on. And and, and I think that's going to about cover most of the things, uh, so that we're all on the same page. And so, what are some different scenarios where something like this may come in to play? Suppose you're hiking through some backcountry and you stop to set up a base camp. And from here you want to get out and you want to wander around, but you don't have a detailed topographic map of your area or your location. But you want to go be able to, to go over to this spot and then maybe go over and hit this spot and then be able to work your way back to your base camp. This is a perfect opportunity for you to be able to use a compass and not necessarily have a detailed map for your area. And so the scenario two is you're scouting out a location to do some hunting, right? You, you know that you, you're gonna park on the side of the road, you wanna be able to work out to, to the left or to the north, to the south, whatever it is. You wanna go be able to scout out these different areas and return back to your truck. And again, you don't have a map, all you have is your compass, right? So the next scenario is you wanna make a detailed map of an area. Maybe, maybe it's a, a personal property that you have, maybe it's a bug out location, a place where you have a cabin and you don't have a really good detailed topographical map and so you want to make your own this is a perfect skill for that scenario and last but not least is you're lost in the sauce man and all you know is you need to be able to move around and make it back to where you are right now all I need is a piece of paper a pen uh, and know what my pace count is and be able to use a compass right and so we'll say that we're going to scout out uh, this area, which is looks to be to our uh, southwest, and then we'll move along uh, towards this direction, maybe, and then work our way back. We'll go to at least two spots and work our way back. If we're only doing one, then you would just use a reverse azimuth, which is the exact opposite direction. So if you were to, uh, to just say you're going at one degree, your back azimuth would be 181. So if it's between one and 180, you would add 180. If it's between 180 and 360, you'd subtract 180. Hopefully that makes sense. But we'll, uh, we'll say that we're gonna shoot an azimuth of uh, 220 degrees. Now to use a compass, uh, you know, I could use a, the center hold method, which is what I'm doing right now, or I could use a compass to cheek, uh, but I'm not trying to shoot a very specific azimuth, so that's why I'm just using center hold technique. Orient your body until you got uh, 220 underneath your black index line, which is right here, and I know I got a little bit of glare uh, coming up, but hopefully you can kind of tell what I'm doing here. And then you're going to rotate your bezel ring 
until the illuminating marker on the bezel ring and the illuminating marker on the north seeking arrow are in line and you are on 220. So it looks like we should be about good to go. And so now that we have this preset, what I'm gonna do before I step off is I'm gonna start writing stuff down. All right, so we're moving off at uh, 220 degrees. We'll say we're gonna go, uh, we'll keep it short. We're just gonna go 100 meters. So I'm gonna go out about 65 paces. And once again, I look down at my bearing, make sure I got my 220. My compass is preset here. There's 220 right there. I'm gonna look out, man. I, I got nothing but uh, some growth and nothing I can use as a steering mark. Uh, so I'm gonna have to kind of pay attention to my, to my compass a little bit. And well, let, let's, uh, let's get to this here, yeah? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, Sixty-five. So we just moved out a hundred paces, and so now I can kind of make a log down of uh, where we're at. Sixty-five paces. That's one hundred meters at two hundred and twenty degrees. Now, you know. So I think there's a couple different types of people that are out there. You, you tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think there are some people that who get outdoors. Because they need to, they need to change their mindset. You know, uh, they need to relax, they need to unwind, they need to to detox from the world. And I, I think there's others of us who come out to to feel alive. I don't know if that makes sense, but I love being outside. I love observing. I love looking at the trees and the grass, the vegetation. I love listening to things. Earlier it was uh, it was hailing on us. It was pretty interesting. Didn't last too long. All kinds of things to see and observe. If we just open up our eyes, and hear a road out somewhere. I don't know. So we'll say. Uh, We'll say this time, we'll move out uh, 100 I want to move out in this direction. We can call it 350 degrees. All right, so 350 degrees. Again, I don't have any, any benchmarks. There's nothing that's... that's out in my line of sight that that's, I'm, I know I'm going to be able to get to uh, beyond a, a couple trees up here. And uh, I'm just going to pay attention to my cup, compass again. And, uh, and we'll keep we'll keep trucking this thing. So oop, I, let me, I got to write this down. 350 degrees. I don't, we won't say we're going to go a specific distance. We'll just uh, so we'll call this point A. 350 degrees. And we'll mark down how far we traveled after after we get out somewhere. Double check one more time. 350. And we'll walk out to a couple trees out here. And then once I get to the other side, we'll uh, shoot an azimuth again. And you can kind of see these two trees right out here. I'm gonna be walking. Now that's right on my uh, that's right on my azimuth. So we'll we'll step it out there and uh, we'll shoot an azimuth again. One, two, three. That worked out to uh, about 60 paces where I'm at right now. A little bushwhacking through there. That's all right. If you get concerned about trying to stay on a straight line, you know, it, it can be difficult to do, um, depending on the vegetation. I'll go over how to go through or around some obstacles at another time. Looks like, keep moving down through a little bit, see if it opens back up. 
We got a pretty tall uh, pretty tall dug fir out in front of me. We'll uh, we'll go see what's on the other side of this thing. Get it right around over on the other side. Sitting at uh, man, some thick stuff. It's a big old dug fir though, I tell you what. It's got some fat wood on this guy. Here, let's take a little break here and look at this. You see that right there? That's all sap. That will burn up in a heartbeat, man. You, you get out here, Pacific Northwest, and gotta get some fires going. You gotta look out for stuff like that. It can help save a life if you need it. Ugh. Oh boy, I tell you what, there ain't, it's pretty thick back through this area. So uh, I'm going to mark this down. There it is. With 350, sit right at 200 meters. And we're at a, I think we're all cut up over this hill. I'm going to remember this big tree though. It's pretty easy to, to remember all that thing, yeah. Kind of dead, dead branches going up about 25, 30 feet. It's been injured quite a bit in the past. See some sap all over it, and uh, moving downhill, down sloping through here. Pretty easy to remember. Pretty easy to remember. I do have a couple of tall uh, pine trees off to to my right. And I think, I think we'll just shoot up in this direction here. And then uh, we'll work it back to our starting point after that. So we'll take this at, uh, we'll call it 140 degrees. I got a, one tree I'll be able to use. Uh, it looks like it, but it's not that far, maybe maybe 40 meters or so, and I'll have to, to double check after that. Uh, let me write that down again, huh? Uh, it's easy to forget. 140, 140 meters, 140 degrees. <laughs> Man. All right. Uh, 28 paces now. I'll write that down. So I forget when I start. It's 29 paces. So um, 29 paces. I can kind of see uh, how it kind of opens up, moving off uh, in this direction. We're gonna go check that out. So we're actually gonna call it 29 paces to right there. Uh, and I'll figure that out. I'll figure out what that is. It's probably around 50 meters or so. so we're gonna cut off, uh, I don't know, let's say, uh, kind of opens up pretty decent right in through here. So we're gonna call her 80 degrees. Should probably dummy cord that to myself 80 degrees and then again we'll, we'll just kind of step off again and, and not necessarily a, a specific distance moving out and then we'll log it and then we'll sit down and we'll figure out how to do this to work our way back to where we started from which is where the cars parked and that's kind of an important thing to get back to right. so that's one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 
So that's, that's 65 right there. So that was, that was 200 meters. And uh, it's getting a little thick coming back in through here again. I was a little thick coming all the way through this time. A couple, couple of open patches back down there. A lot of game trails though. A lot of game trails. So uh, before I forget, so that's 200 meters. And that was at 80, 80 degrees. So now, uh, so now the trick is we put our, our pack down and uh, I'm going to find a, a decent, I mean, I guess I can use right here, uh, kind of like the way that looks up there, but I'm going to set my pack down right here where I stopped because no matter what, based off my calculations, if I wanted to, to go wander out anywhere else, maybe hang some engineer tape or an orange range flag or something like that, I can always work my way back back to my pack and I know where this is in relationship to where I started from because I have all of the azimuths or all the, the directions that I traveled and how far I was between each point and now I can start to draw a map. So I could do this a couple ways. If I came out with uh, some graph paper and I was making a, a visual map along the way, I, I could make some notes on there and draw everything to scale. I, I don't have that, uh, but I do have some 550 cord. And so I'm gonna lay out uh, just a small uh, two scale map on the ground using my compass and some 550 cord and uh, some little sticks or something to mark out all the spots. And then we're gonna work our way back to where we started from back to the car so we can we can get out of here all right so getting going here i uh, got my hatchet got some 550 cord i got my notes uh compass i have a, a flat protractor and some stakes here and i finish this one up here real quick and this should it should start making sense here pretty quick so it doesn't matter where uh so i'll just stay right here sit down the first stake and we know that we moved out at 220 degrees, which is, let's see, in this direction. And I'm going to use uh, my 550 cord just to help visualize what we're doing here. I'll put a little lark's head down here at the base. Right, and for the distance, I'm going to be using my protractor. I'm going to say an entire length here is going to be 50 meters. So when we first stepped off, we moved at 100 meters. That's 50 meters there, 100 meters. Pull this along the azimuth here, and we're going to pop in another stake. From here... We moved it 350 degrees, which is right there. And then this one was for 200 meters. That says 50, 100, 150, 200 meters here. And this is right in line there. And so we're going to take another stake and pop her in the ground. All right, so next we move 140 degrees, which is right here. Moving almost to back towards our starting point. This time we only move 50 meters. So that's going to be one length here. And then from here we move to 80 degrees, which is... Right here. And we moved out at 200 meters. That's, that's 50, 100, 150, 200 meters. And make sure this is all in line here. All right. Right there. Uh, 
All right. And so there, there's our travel. And so from a different perspective here, we started here at our starting point. We moved to Point Alpha, down over here to Bravo, Charlie, Delta. And then from here, we just need to figure out how to get back to our starting point. Then I'm gonna take my compass and I'm gonna set it down and I'm gonna make sure that it's pointing towards my starting point, about 239 degrees. And from there, I just need to get my distance. So it's 50, 100, 150, 200, and about 25 meters. 225. And so write this down here. 239, 225 meters. And so as I get packed up here, um, I want to leave my 550 cord here. Don't want to leave any trace that I've been here. 20 degrees which is right right there I'm going to preset my compass and we're going to set this thing off I don't it looks fairly clear uh, out in between a couple of pretty large uh, dug firs uh, so hopefully we'll be hopefully we'll be pretty good yeah, it's pretty clear all right <laughs> Hey, nothing but a thing. I'm not, I'm not in Australia. I'm not worried about critters that are gonna eat me. Uh, that's about 100 meters. We got another 100 to go. Gosh, dang, it's thick as heck. It didn't look that bad. <laughs> ah, well, at least we made it. Ah, goodness gracious. This is right at uh, pretty close to my 200 meters. I hit 65 uh, back just before I broke out of the brush there. So you can see, you know, we didn't move that far. You know, a couple hundred meters there, 50 meters there, 100 meters here. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter if you move in 100 meters, 200 meters, 25 meters. What's important is to move out accurately. Know your distance and know your direction. So I did tell you, um, I was going to leave off, you know, with uh, a couple things uh, to throw in your kit bag. And one is, uh, you know, as far as key pointers, things to, to remember, is the first one that I've seen people have issues with is trusting their compass. They don't trust their precision instrument that they have in their hands. So people start moving out and after they get gone, they don't trust their compass as far as the bearing and, and, and the direction that they're traveling and they don't trust their pace count. So you can imagine what happens is after somebody gets moving six, seven, eight hundred meters or beyond and they start second guessing and they start doubting where they are in time and space, people start panicking. As soon as you start panicking, man, that's when things go wrong. So get out and master your craft of using a compass. Get out and master your craft of using a map. Get out and master the field craft of just knowing what your area and what the surroundings are trying to tell you. Because I'm telling you, they're telling you all kinds of things. If we just listen, if we just quiet ourselves and listen to what it is that the environment is trying to tell us. Man, nature, it has a beautiful story if we just open up our minds. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, make sure you like it. Leave some comments down below and let me know what you think. Maybe there's something that I could have done or shown or, or just to improve on and the next time we come out here into the woods or maybe it's an own experience that you have or a little nugget that you want to share uh, with myself and with everybody else who's going to be coming in here. And as always, man, I appreciate you hanging out and I look forward to continuing on the conversation and the dialogue. Hey, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already done so. And until then, we'll see you.